Hello everybody, this is Pastor Tom welcoming you to another study in the Word. What a great day it is. What a great day to be alive. Today we're going to study our fifth session on the series that I like to call Wicked Spirits. I'd like you to turn in your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 6, if you will, please. Ephesians chapter 6, and also 1 Timothy chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 6 and 1 Timothy chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 6, verse uh, 12. Very familiar portion of Scripture. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of, the of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Actually, the Amplified Bible reads the last part of that verse this way, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly supernatural sphere. And then if we'll turn over, please, to 1 Timothy chapter 4, and I'll read a verse of scripture there. 1 Timothy chapter 4, a few verses of scripture, verses 1 and 2. Now the Holy Spirit express, uh, speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, uh, speaking lies in hypocrisy. I want you to notice that today. Their conscience seared with a hot iron. Now I want you to notice this verse of scripture out of the Amplified Bible in verse 1. But the Holy Spirit distinctly and expressly declares that in the latter times some will turn away from the, from the faith, giving attention to deluding and seducing spirits and doctrines that demons teach. Certainly we have lots of doctrines that demons are teaching. Unfortunately, many Christians are turning away from the truth to these doctrines that the devil seems to be trying to implement into the church world. I don't call it the body of Christ because, of course, the body of Christ will not accept it, the true body of Christ. But many people around church circles are accepting some of these wicked doctrines. It says expressly, the Holy Spirit expressly spoke to our generation, and the Holy Spirit expressly made a point that some will begin to turn and listen to these doctrines. Today I'm going to start a series within our series. We just got done with the Jezebel spirit, which is a bit more can be said about the Jezebel spirit, but there's a lot of good books out there. There's a lot on the internet that uh, deals with that particular uh, spirit, and a lot's been said uh, by me even in my series up till now about that wicked spirit. But I can tell you one of the greatest challenges that we're facing today when it comes to wicked spirit is what I would call the homosexual or bisexual spirit. Now, I'm going to introduce this today, and I want to say uh, right off that I'm going to get into this in some good detail. Unfortunately, many people are being deceived in the church world even, especially in the world, but in the church world today, about this area of homosexuality, bisexuality, transgender sexuality, whatever you want to call it. Now, I have become quite familiar with this area, not because I was ever a homosexual myself or tempted in this area, but because in my ministry over 36 years, I've dealt with a lot of people who have been involved in what they call today a gay lifestyle, homosexual lifestyle, a bisexual lifestyle. Uh, many people would call it, and, and I certainly understand uh, the term, uh, same-sex attraction. I have learned a lot about this, and I have a compassionate view towards the people that are uh, bound by this type of thinking, bound by this type of lifestyle. Now, in this teaching, we're going to be taking a very close look, but a very compassionate look, at what the Word of God has to say about homosexuality and bisexuality activity, gay marriage, so on and so forth. What does the Bible actually say? A lot of people are very confused about this. It's amazing to me that people are this confused. I really don't think they are as much as I think they want to. 
They just want to, uh, if I can use this term, change things around to some type of political correctness in their life. But we have to be very careful. I think that the body of Christ or the church world as a whole has not handled the whole homosexual uh, situation in a way that really was godly. A lot of people have mocked, made fun of, uh, and, 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 you know, um, come at it in a way that has pushed people away and, and has been really mean-spirited and stuff. I don't intend to do that whatsoever. Uh, there is no hate speech with me. I don't hate anybody. I love everybody. Uh, homosexuals or people who participate in a homosexual lifestyle uh, are bound by sin. All of us are sinners. And one of the things I've learned over the years, really the Bible says quite a bit about homosexuality, but it also says a lot about a lot of other things too. So if you are one of these people that wants to point fingers and say that uh, because I'm talking about this, I'm some kind of a hate person or homophobic person, I want you to know that I've seen many, many homosexual people over the years come out of a gay lifestyle, not because they were psychologically manipulated by me or anybody else, but by the power of the blood of Jesus, the power that there is in the salvation of Christ. And the Bible says, if any person be in Christ, they are a new creature. Old things pass away, behold, all things become new. I, I myself have had the pleasure of leading many homosexuals, uh, people that were tempted with bisexuality, and even transgender people to the Lord, and seen radical changes to where uh, same-sex attraction literally was broken in their lives, and they uh, went on to lead what the Bible would call straight, and what the Bible would call uh, godly lifestyles that also included marriage to the opposite sex, or what the Bible would, would call marriage between a man or a woman. Um, a note here, though, to the homosexual community listening over the years, I want, I, I want you again to understand that um, many of these uh, people that have come out of the gay lifestyle have told me that they were very thankful <laughs> because many of the, to me because many of them were sitting in churches that took on a, a viewpoint on homosexuality where there was a lot of compromise where they said they weren't sure what the Bible taught about, or they twisted scriptures to say, uh, somehow say that it was okay. Listen, here's what they have told me. They thanked me for not compromising, even though I took a very compassionate stand, I took a very bold stand, and many of them that now have seen the, uh, the truth have told me how much they appreciated me not compromising God's word. So if you, if you want to hear what the word of God actually says about this in a compassionate way, then this will be your series of teachings. Um, I did start out by saying that we're not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, because I believe with all of my heart, homosexual, uh, uh, homosexual spirit exists. It's a great and powerful principality, it has captured the minds and the hearts of a whole generation of people all over the world now and is beginning to do the same thing and is really making progress in the last 10 years in America and in Canada and in Europe and all over the world. Um, I want to bring healing. I believe there's going to be a great harvest in the homosexual community. Yet we can do that without compromising the truth. Now, I believe that we speak the word in love. Thousands of gay and gender-confused folks will find freedom in Christ, just like everybody else who's a sinner has found freedom in Christ, because everybody's looking, all human beings are looking to fill that God-shaped void on the inside of them. All of us. Those practicing homosexual, bisexual, transgender lifestyles are no different than all the rest of us they're seeking to fulfill that. They're seeking a family. They're seeking acceptance. They're seeking love. Um, but the God-shaped void left from our sin nature without Christ, passed on from our first parents, has, as we will see in the Word of God very clearly, become, uh, got to the point to where this now becomes a major issue. So with that said, let me begin our study here.
In this study, we are only going to give you the truth about what God's Word said. We're not going to twist anything. We're not going to take things out of context like some of the pro-gay ministers are doing. God loves all human beings and wants all human beings free. Yes, but true freedom comes only from the one who created us. And to be free, we must think and do things according to his ways, his viewpoints, what he believes. There's an old saying that says this, Nothing is so easy as to deceive oneself for what we wished we really believed. A lot of truth in that. I like to talk about deception this way. The one who is deceived doesn't know they are deceived because the very nature of deception causes them not to know they're deceived. In other words, if they knew they were deceived, they wouldn't be deceived. Thousands of people have been deceived into thinking that a gay lifestyle somehow is normal, somehow they were born that way, somehow God does not wink at it, you know, or winks at it and, and he understands, all of these type of things. The truth of the matter is, even some Christians today are saying and beginning to try to twist the scriptures and their own beliefs to say and approve of this type of lifestyle. And the truth of the matter is, this is going to become a most major issue, I believe, and already is. That's the nature of deception. People around you many times can see you're deceived, but the person who's deceived doesn't see it, or they just wouldn't be deceived. It's a sad fact that many Christians even are being deceived in this particular situation, this particular area. They certainly are not getting it from the Word of God. They're getting it from demons that would twist the Word of God. Remember Jesus in the Mount of Temptation. Satan used the Word to tempt him. Satan used the Word at one point to try to twist things because that's the way the devil is. He does. He twists the Word. I'd like you to turn in your Bible to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. I want to show you something. If anybody out there has any aspirations of ever being free in your mind, being totally free, you need to understand this scripture. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifest manifestation of the truth, committing ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. That if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for our sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. It, it, a person can be de deceived in many ways. They can be darkened in many ways. Now today we have a certain amount of people out there that don't even believe in God, don't believe in Christ, are not Christians, and the reason they're not is because for some reason uh, their minds have been blinded by the God of this world. Satan is called the God of this world. Demons are these things that blind people's minds, demonic doctrines, and demonic and demonic thinking blinds the minds of people. But it's not just the salvation in the sense that uh, is what he's talking about here. You can, be, you can be thoroughly saved, but be blinded in an area. Many people are. They're being blinded to the truth in this area. And I am here to try to give you what the Bible actually says about this in a good, bold, and compassionate way so that we can let go of the blinders and really help people. To help people is to give them the truth. Speak the truth in love is the only thing that really ever will set somebody free. Never compromise. You don't have to compromise. Never be concerned about it, simply because what you're saying may not be popular in the culture or in the, the atmosphere that you may be in. Truth is still truth. And again, truth Praise God will set people free. Give the truth. Because the truth sets people free. It illuminates their minds. Now I'd like to turn to Romans chapter 1. We'll start our study here today. And probably, hopefully, get through the study today. Because if we're going to talk about homosexuality, we're going to have to 
a good place to start. A lot of people like to start in the Old Covenant or Old Testament, but I want to start in the New Testament. I want to go through the book of Romans chapter 1 slowly, and I want to dig a little bit because there's a lot said here, very interesting, and it will help us to shine some light on this, this subject. But, before we talk about Romans chapter 1, and we'll be reading Romans chapter 1, verses 18 through 32, I did want to say this. Before we speak out of Romans chapter 1, I want to, I want to say something because many people that are participating in trying to say that homosexuality is okay or that a gay lifestyle is, is normal and Jesus uh, uh, put his stamp of approval on it, say that, and they, they say this when they say that. Jesus never said anything about homosexuality. And uh, I want to refute that right off because many of you listening to me may have heard that. They say Jesus never said anything about homosexual being a sin or a wrong lifestyle. The truth of the matter is Jesus said tons about it. And uh, not only did he refer to it and so on uh, in his own ministry, but here's where the problem lies with a statement like that. John chapter 1, verse 1 through 4. I wanna, I'm going to read it to you because uh, many of you maybe haven't heard it, and many of you have, but maybe you just didn't think about it. it it's like the guy who says, well, it's the red letters. No, the whole word of God is Jesus Christ. Look at verse 1 of John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, speaking of the God, speaking of the Word, speaking of Jesus Christ. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Skip down to verse 14. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now, what I want you to see here is very simple. People quote that. They say, well, Jesus didn't really deal with the homosexual thing. Anything in the Word of God relating to homosexuality or any other subject is Jesus speaking to us because Jesus is the Word. This is God's Word. The Word of God is God speaking to us as human beings. It's the only thing that brings us truth. The Bible is not some good book. The Bible is life, light. It is a road map for our lives. It's alive. It was God-breathed by the Spirit of God through holy men as they were moved by the Spirit of God to write it down. There's nothing like the Word of God. That's been proven over and over and over. The Word of God is God speaking to us personally. And so anything that's said from Genesis to Revelation is Jesus Christ himself speaking to us. Let's get that right. People need to understand that. So when I quote out of Romans, or I quote out of 1st or 2nd Corinthians, we are literally having Jesus Christ himself speak to us and say exactly what he wants to say. Period. Now, nobody can really be a Christian and not believe that. All right? That is basic Christianity in its basic form. And it's always been that way, and it always will. Now... Let's go to Romans chapter 1 and begin there. And I want to start at verse 18, I believe. And we'll start reading there, uh, verse 18. Now I'm going to read out of the, uh, the, the King James Version of the Bible, but I'll bounce back to the Amplified, and I'll talk about Greek words and stuff here uh, as we go, some things. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Not just homosexuals, but everybody. So understand that in context. Verse 18. Because that which, they, which was known of God is manifest unto them, for God has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into the image made unto a to corruptible man, and to birds, 
four-footed beasts, and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their bodies between themselves. Notice that. Who changed the truth of God into a lie, worship and serve the creature more than the Creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up to vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into which was against nature, and likewise also the men, leaving the, the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which was unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. Even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God then gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignancy, and whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, and venerous of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do them, but they take pleasure in them that do them. This does not read as almost like a newspaper headline today. I don't know what does. Literally, this gives us a lot of information. It's very powerful. Verse 18 out of the Amplified Bible says, It is the wickedness of men, the sinful nature, uh, that causes this. Now look at verse 18. I want to read this out of the Amplified because I don't want to get ahead of myself here, but it's very interesting. Notice what it says. For God's holy wrath and indignation are revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who in their wickedness repress and hinder the truth and make it inoperative. So he's saying here that wicked men, because of the wicked nature of our sin as men, now that word sin is going to be used by me a lot, because, and it's not a, it's not a, a, a very um, popular term even amongst Christians. But the truth is, God says that sin is anything that that misses the mark, anything that 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 falls uh, below God's holy character. And He says here that it is the wickedness of men, their simple nature uh, of the the simple, you know nature and a spirit of an unbeliever. The spirit of a believer, of course, is born again. But it can be the body or the mind even of an unbelie a, a unbeliever or a believer who can believe these things. The soul, the unrenewed mind or body, even of regenerated men, can still believe some wrong things. But he says that these people repress, push down, hide, and will do anything to hinder the truth, to make the truth inoperative, to hide the truth. Think about how people hide the truth along this line of homosexuality. Think about what is being done to push down what God really says about it. Think about the public school system, the educational systems, the media says, uh, what the media is saying today. All of these agendas are speaking positively of this lifestyle, while well, God's Word has something completely different to say. But it's being repressed. It's being pushed down. It's being hidden. This is the work of the enemy to try to get people not to be able to see the light of God's Word, which will set you free. Verse 19 says, The truth is now... Uh, uh, the truth is that we are not with, we are without excuse. Let's read verse 19 again because it's interesting here. It says, "Because that which was, which may be known of God, is manifest in them, for God has showed it to them." Now God clearly says to all human beings that there's no excuse not to believe in God. I want to say this, and I want you to think about it from a biblical standpoint. I know a lot of people are going to refute me. I'm going to get. People who are going to write me on, on uh, YouTube and say, you know, I'm crazy. Uh, they, they believe this and that and the other thing. The truth is there's not a human being on earth who deep down inside does not know there's a God. I don't care if they claim to be atheists or not. I've heard a lot of atheists who have told me that really deep down inside they knew the whole time once they came to Jesus Christ and once they got saved. It's the same for every human being on this earth. 
We all have been put, put within us, this God-shaped missing void here, and it has been shown to us. All right? God, in each person, uh, even with the wickedness of sin, does all he can these, uh, to show us the truth. I mean, he, and, 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 and it's interesting because um, he has done everything he possibly can to give us every hint, every clue, you know. But deep down the side of each person, there's a knowing that there is a God. But the wickedness of sin does all it can to push down, cover over, hide the truth. Why? Because if it comes to the truth, this wickedness would be revealed for what it is, and acknowledgement of God and His holy wood would have to be made. This is the dilemma of all of us. We have to come to the place where we acknowledge that God is right and we're wrong. Stop being our own gods. It's only when we desire to say, I really want to know God, my Creator, in truth, that our hearts will open. And the Bible says, if we seek, we shall find. Now, some of you that are watching me, that are participating in a gay lifestyle, honestly want to know the truth. If you do, you'll find it. You see? All we have to do is want to know why we're here, why we're created. What's this all about? Verse 20 says, shows us that God has shown all men through the things that he's made. The sky, the universe, the stars, the seas, the mountains, the birds, the creatures. He's shown us that he's real through his handiwork because men who want to acknowledge him are really without excuse. All you have to do is take a walk, walk on the beach, and if you're honest, you understand there's a creation there, not evolution. Evolution never really did throw me much, even though I'm not what you would call a, a very educated person in, this, uh, in the idea of, of all this evolution stuff. It never did throw me much because I, I'm smart enough to realize that if you put a watch down on the on the table, that watch just, oh, it doesn't matter how many millions of years, it would never come together. There was a creation behind that watch, how much more all of the earth and the things that we see. Never did bite on that. I used to hear that in school and I'd laugh. And I was a heathen. You should laugh too. Because God's got some things to say about this. Um, so, he showed us all men. This is what... Uh, it's so bizarre about evolution. You know, he really has showed us. Verse 21 says, Men in general, in the history of mankind, even when they knew and recognized him as God, they did not honor and glorify him as God or even give him thanks. Then in verse 22 it says, and, and I'm going to read verse 22, because it says, Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Actually, the Amplified Bible says, Claiming to be wise, they became fools. Professing to be smart, they were made simpletons of themselves. I'm going to say something to you that's very impolitically correct. <laughs> Anybody who believes in evolution, uh, the actual word here in the Greek, look it up, is, a, is as far as God's concerned, the word here is moron. I know that that's, not, that's an unpolitically correct term. <laughs> to say, but that's what he thinks about people who believe in evolution. They be, have become educated fools. Now, the reason I'm bringing ed, uh, evolution into this is because what has happened here is clearly we have come to the place in our society where we have pushed God out. We teach evol evolution in our schools as, as though it was a fact. But yet still, inside of every man, we are without excuse because we can see those things that he's created around us. Now, Verse 23 is important because the key word here is changed. Men change. The world changes God. But God, the Bible says, does not change. Many in the church have attempted to change God and are changing God by changing his word or attempting to change his word by twisting his word. You'll find people in the gay community and the homosexual community that fight uh, biblically uh, saying that the truth is, you know, not that God is against homosexuality. They are trying to change God, literally, trying to change what his word really says. They have to even make a point. And it's unfortunate. They'll go back and say you have to understand the Greek. You have to understand the Hebrew. You have to understand the culture. 
You have to understand this and you have to understand that. Though it's amazing to me that all the history of the church and the great church scholars that have been down through the ages all have interpreted these words the same way for years, yet these people here have some new kind of light that is to enlighten us about something that only is even being discussed because the world has gotten to a point to where it is going to hell in a handbasket and the only way we can get away with it is simply to continue to try to change God and his word but God changes not his word never changes the Bible says they changed God into what they wanted him to be how they wanted him to be and how they wanted him to act that's never going to work because God just does not change because of this changing, the Bible says in verse 24, God indeed gave them what they wanted. Truth was withheld, or at least twisted. And when this began to happen, it's very dangerous. I want to read verse 24, because wherefore God also gave them up, when you see that word God given them up to uncleanness, through the lust of their own heart, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Uh, the Amplified says it this way, Therefore God gave them up to the lusts of their own hearts, to sexual impurity, to the dishonoring of their bodies among themselves, abandoning them to degrading power of sin. It's very interesting here, because the word here, where it says God gave them up, when an individual, or a group, or a denomination, or a people, or a country, whatever, begins to try to change God in any way, God will respond. There's a judgment on that. God will respond, and the judgment is, God will give them up to the lusts of their own heart. What do we see happening all around us? We will also see this dishonoring of their bodies. Any kind of sexual impurity, including homosexuality, bisexuality or transgender type of thing is an act of dishonoring one's own body and abandoning themselves to the degrading power of sin this has happened and is happening more because society is pushing God out of the equation more and more pushing truth out of the equation more and more and it is happening all over now I'm going to stop here today because we want to take a greater look at this, but I've already run out of my time, my lot of time. I try to hold it to around 30 minutes because most people's attention span, that's about all we have nowadays, unfortunately. But we're going to get into this. We're going to talk about this even more. But what I want you to know today is this. When we, cre we commit any kind of sexual uh, sin, we are dishonoring our own body. We are dishonoring our Creator who knows what's best and no amount of, tw of twisting the Scripture to try to say that's okay will ever make it okay. Until next time, remember, God loves you, we love you, and we're praying for you. We'll talk to you soon. God bless you.